we are going to be evaluating functions today, which should be pretty short and sweet and quick and light. And so get you some paper, take some notes, and let's go. Math with Miss B. Math with Miss B. There's a thousand other places that you'd rather be. But you're watching Math with Miss B. Evaluate a function, um, input the given value to the function, and then simplify. So with numbers, pretty straightforward, okay? So we're going to plug in 2 first, and when we plug in 2 into x squared plus 3x plus 5, it's going to look something like this, f of 2 equals 2 squared plus 3 times 2 plus 5. Now remember, PEMDAS is key. So we're going to do exponents first, which is going to give me 4, and then multiplication, 3 times 2 is 6. And once I get that, I add them all together, 4 plus 6 plus 5 is going to give me 15. So the proper way to write that is to say f of 2 equals 15. So f parentheses 2, close parentheses, equals 15, and that's going to get you the money. So next, we're going to do f of 0. We love plugging in 0. You want to know why I love plugging in 0? Because when I plug in 0, mostly everything goes away. So 0 squared is going to be 0. 3 times 0 is going to be 0. And that's going to give me 5. So f of 0 equals 5. That's the proper notation for that. All right. So the next and last one is f of negative 1. When I plug in negative 1, I get negative 1 squared, which is going to give me positive 1. And then I can do 3 times negative 1, which is negative 3. And so 1 minus 3 is going to give me negative 2. Negative 2 plus 5 is going to give me 3. So ta-da! So now when we are evaluating functions, what becomes a little bit tricky is when we're plugging in other variables and functions okay so if i want to evaluate f of 2x that means instead of plugging in 2 i would plug in 2x so everywhere where there's an x instead of x would be 2x and i have to follow my order of operations just all the same so 2x squared is not 2x squared it's 2 times 2 which is 4 and x times x which is x squared so 4x squared and then i'm going to make sure that i multiply the 2x times the 3 that's going to give me 6x plus 5 I'm going to look for like terms to combine, but in this case, there's no like terms to combine. So bada bing, bada boom, there you go. Now I'm going to do f of negative a. So when I do f of negative a, that means instead of a number, I'm plugging in negative a as my um, input. So that means that that's going to look something like this. f parentheses negative a, close parentheses equals negative a squared inside parentheses. Don't forget that and then plus three times in parentheses negative a plus five. When I simplify that, I'm gonna go ahead and get negative a squared, negative a times negative a, that's gonna give me positive a, right? And then I'm going to multiply the middle term and then simplify, and so that would be my answer. Now we're gonna go ahead and do this last one, which is gonna be a little bit trickier, but it's fine. Okay, so this one is going to be plugging in x plus 4. So I'm going to do x plus 4 in parentheses squared plus 3 times x plus 4 and then the plus 5 at the end. What we're going to notice is that I have to do exponents first. I keep saying that and I keep saying that for a reason. When I do my exponents first, uh, that means I'm going to have to do x plus 4 squared. x plus 4 squared is not x squared plus 16. That is one of the biggest mistakes that people make when we're, they're doing problems like this. It is not x squared plus 16. It is x plus 4 times x plus 4. And that needs to be double distributed or foiled, whatever you want to call it, okay? So you would do x times x, and that's going to give you x squared uh, plus 4x. And then you would do the 4 times x and then the 4 times the 4 so that is going to give you x squared plus 4x plus 4x plus 16. You always want to make sure that you combine your like terms. When you combine these like terms you're going to get the 8x in the middle so x squared plus 8x plus 16 is your answer just for that first part. Pay attention. 
Okay, so now when I bring that into the equation, what I'm going to notice is I still need to distribute that three on into the x plus four. So I'm gonna get x squared plus 16, x plus eight x plus 16 plus three x plus 12 because I distributed three times x, three times four. And then the plus five all oh, is lonely back there. When we combine our like terms, I'm gonna combine the eight and the three, that's gonna give me 11. And then I'm gonna combine the 16, the 12, and the five, and that's how I get the 43. This is our final answer for that problem. Okay, not hard, just a lot of steps. You gotta make sure to remember to do that double distribution. So now we're gonna look at evaluating functions based on their graph. When I evaluate functions based on my graph, this is honestly the easier part. Because if I'm looking at two, I'm just gonna find um, two on the x axis. And I'm going to find where the function meets two on the x axis. And look at that. It meets at um, negative two. So guess what my answer is? Negative two. Boop. Uh, the next one is zero. There's not really anything to slide down for zero, so I'm just going to notice that it's at 1.5, negative 1.5, so negative 1.5 is my answer. Um, and then for when we plug in a negative one, I'm going to notice hello to slide up a little bit to, to the function, and that's going to give me a positive one, so that is my answer for that one. So now I want you to try the same thing for the next graph. Try to figure out what f of 2 is, what f of 0 is, and what f of negative 1 is. You should pause the video. Okay, hopefully you paused. Okay, so when I plug in 2, guess what I'm going to get? 2. We're gonna plug in zero, so we're gonna be at a zero. And then when I plug in negative one. Woo -woo. And I get one. That was so easy. All right, so now let's evaluate the function using tables just so that we're well-rounded so that nobody can say they don't understand the concept. Okay, when I plug in negative two, that means that I'm going to look for, not negative two, when I plug in two, I'm gonna look for a two on the table. What number comes with it? A six, guess what the answer is, six. F of eight, same thing. You should be able to figure this out now without even my help. Eight goes with what, 64? Boom. And last but not least, four goes with 16. Ta-da! You did it! That is how you evaluate functions in a nutshell. You should go back through the video. I say this every time. Go back through the video. See if you can do it on your own without my help. Um, because that's how you know if you're really learning math. And if not, I'll see you in the next one. Later!